Hello and welcome to episode four of Starside Chat, the official podcast of Starside Cafe. I'm one of your hosts, Aaron, and with me is Zach. I'm the other host. That's true. We're co-hosts, the two of us. We should come up with like subtitles at some point. How do you mean? Like, like for, vice president and president? No, 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 no. For like the show episodes. Oh, well, usually you name episodes of podcasts based on like stuff you've talked about. Yeah. Like, like I noticed that you titled the last one like Gold Bloom and or Augmented Reality or something like that. Oh, I guess I did put sort of a subtitle on the last one, didn't I? Yeah, I feel like it's more content based than like uh, we can't like preconceive of them. That's true. Yeah. So we'll think of it after we're done recording. You already know because you are listening to this and you can read the subtitles. So you are a uh, future ahead of thinkers. What is that word? Precognitive in some ways. Yeah. So, yeah, if you think of a good title, tell us. Well, no, because I will already will already have titled it. What are you talking about? <laughs> they're going to read it and they're going to tell us in the past what it should be. And then we'll intuit it. You're, you're blowing my mind, Zach. Minority report. Uh, Zach, it's time to get into the news of the week. Do it. Well, first of all, I guess, uh, pre that, how was your week? Uh, I mean, it was fine. How was your week? exciting happened? Mine was good. It was a little bit too cold for my liking, but, uh... It was. It was cold, and it snowed, like, a whole bunch the other night. It's true. And now it's gone. I guess one thing that happened to me... Uh, that's interesting, as I have realized that I've become a Domino's boy. Oh, that's right. You did. You did become a Domino's man. I'm a big Domino's boy, man, and uh, I love the app, and the pizza's good, and I'm getting those pizza points, and you know what? I love it. I do like Domino's. We're I gonna... didn't realize I liked it until like two weeks ago. I, so I think it's probably my favorite chain of the chains. But I haven't tested that. We might have to test it. Yes. So uh, something that you might look forward to on the channel, we're talking about doing some food reviews, which I'm very excited about. The report of the week is a personal idol of mine, and I would love to follow in his footsteps and review food. Maybe not in a car, but definitely. On While YouTube. wearing suits with slicked back hair. I own one suit, and I don't have anything to put in my hair, but I could take a shower uh, like directly preceding our recording so it would still be wet but uh tbd we'll see what happens <laughs> so a lot of people don't know who report of the week is but they should look him up because it's yes. kind he's of great, great. <laughs> he's a cool guy anyway now news of the week now that we've gotten away with our personal information zach a lot of things happened with PUBG this week did it so we're gonna talk about what in the what we're playing slash watching section i'll tell you about what happened this weekend but uh, today, or yesterday, they came out that they are making some new game modes because they're sort of in a mad dash to try and win people back from Fortnite because Fortnite is dominating right now. And one of the things... So there's the new map, which is not available to everyone right now. And they're also making a new game type, which is a little bit unheard of. They're, it's not a battle royale. It's, more, it's called the war game type. And it's basically team deathmatch. Like, when you die, it's not the end. You start with a... I believe you start with, a mach- like, a, an Uzi. And you're just dropped in. You can respawn. And I think first team to 80 points, and points are designated by kills and revives and whatnot, first team, first team to 80 points wins. So it's like a fast-paced new version of PUBG. Now, you know I'm in favor of this because I have said for a long time, and maybe I'm wrong because... Uh, you know, I'm one of the few who's not like super in love with the whole battle royale thing. I As enjoy it for what it is, but mm-hmm. the I what I need in order to really get into it and learn how to get better at it is that like repetitive, you know, getting more than one chance at it, you know, and not having to like play for 20, 30 minutes and then start over from scratch after you know dying from some sniper that you never saw. So this, to me, I think is very, very interesting. I'm super into it. Uh, However, I do find it kind of ironic that this, like, crazy new game mode that has come around 
and sort of is changing, uh, well, changing multiplayer a little bit, and like it's the new dominant like game mode is now kind of going backwards to like the more Call of Duty style multiplayer thing in order to find a way to to beat the the competition or at least compete with it. It's very interesting, and I know that a lot of people have wanted for a long time a shooting range that you can just drop into single player and just like test your skills. Overwatch has this uh, because I mean, PUBG is a game where there is like bullet drop, and you need to like kind of lead your shots in some ways. And so a lot of people don't get those chances because you're right. There's sort of like you're dropped in, and when you're dead, you're dead. There's not repetition. And so I think this will definitely help with that. I thought the solution was going to just be the new smaller map because that was also going to lead to like immediate action. But uh, this will also be great, I think, because it will, I think it will, you're right, it's going to improve people's ability to play because it's going to be constant action. There's not going to be the Counter-Strike thing where once you're dead, you sort of just have to watch the match end. Or you don't even get to watch, I guess. But I don't know. A lot of the like pro players that I watch, uh, specifically this guy Chaco Taco, who I really like, Whenever someone asks him, like, how do you get better at PUBG, he always says, play other first-person shooters, because, like, he'll play, he was he started out doing Counter-Strike, I think, and, like, the fast pace like, team deathmatch version of Counter-Strike is, just, like, helps you hone your skills, because there's the repetition, but now you won't have to go to another game to do that. You can play this within PUBG, which I think people will respond very good, well to. Yeah, I think that it's an ideal addition, like... You still have your main battle royale game mode, but now you're you're gonna have a mode that's a little more fast paced. It's a little more action heavy and mm-hmm. a good sort of almost training for like the main yes. event of the game. I'm very excited for it. They I don't believe they had a release date on it, but I think probably. I mean, the way they they iterate so quickly and like when that when they first revealed uh, Miramar, the desert map we were playing it like a month or two months after they had revealed it so like and this savage map that is the smaller one uh they revealed and people are playing it and it's probably going to be released to it's in like closed beta right now you have to have a key but i would imagine that's going to come out very quickly because i mean as a studio there i don't believe that they're working on anything basically besides this so they can put their full force behind it there's been speculation that like even the savage map was like a big pivot Because I think at some point they had said like, oh yeah, we're going to have the desert map. We're also going to have some kind of crazy snow map with like a lot of tall trees. But obviously that snow map is not happening right now. I think they saw what happened with Fortnite, the small, like kind of intimate nature of it. And they were like, oh, we got to do something like this. So they like real quick started uh, pivoting and doing this small map. So I think that they are a very agile culture, as it were at Tencent or whoever is making this. Yeah, I think that is sort of the way games need to to be. Like so it's it's very new the whole uh early access thing, I guess, mm. where like some games have really keyed into it and like PUBG has obviously taken off with it and uh, mostly you see this on Steam. But like I was saying when we were talking about Sea of Thieves that Games need or like developers need to change the way they think about releasing games because if you release it for like you know thirty bucks at you know in early access, people don't necessarily expect you know you know a perfect complete game and you're sort of allowed to iterate and you're allowed to like add more stuff in as you go and now it feels like PUBG is this really great deal right where you're mm. You're getting all these additions and all these new modes, whereas you look at something like uh, No Man's Sky or Sea of Thieves, and you're like waiting for long periods of times mm-hmm. for updates, but also there's that huge initial like anticipation, and then it comes out and it doesn't meet the expectation that you get with like a, a full retail sixty dollar game. Mm-hmm. And because of that, there's this massive drop off and they just hope like a year later, by the time the game feels like a full release that, you know, they can bring the audience back. I think this is the way to do it where it's you don't get like the full price up front, 
but it's in early access. And so even if the game is a little light on content, it's okay. And so you give them time to sort of add to it. Yes. I would say the key is transparency and community engagement or not engagement, but, uh, an open dialogue with the community. I mean, I, I think I, I've talked about this many times on this channel, but like early days Minecraft is something that everyone I feel like wants to emulate. And that was just like very open dialogue of just like, what do you like? What do you not like? Guess what's happening this week? Like constant updates like, oh, there are fish now. Oh, take a look at this effect. Oh, this block type has changed. I've added this kind of ore. Well, that's like, exactly why early access is so great. Yes, I agree. It needs, like, to some extent, you shouldn't allow the community to shape the game you want if it's your singular vision. But sure. the the fact that, like, as a community, you're, I mean, it, it, it feels nice to, like, but engage. It, and I also feel heard. like a lot of the changes that happen over time with something like a No Man's Sky or eventually a Sea of Thieves mm -hmm. will be reactions to community things anyway. Yeah. Like, it's fine if you have your, like, artistic vision at the start of things but so many games are coming out that are content light and they mm. need all these additions in order to make them feel like a complete game and if they've already been on retail shelves for a year by then like the audience isn't going to be there mm -hmm. like think about how crazy it would be if no man's sky released like this year with all the stuff it had like, that would feel like a more complete game, and the reaction would not nearly be as harsh. Like, think about the reaction to when that game launched to when PUBG launched. And, like, content-wise, I don't know that they're that far apart. Like, PUBG's one game mode. Yeah. Uh, but the reaction has been so, so different because of the way they went about releasing it. Yes. I mean, it's that, it's that community, community management and the open dialogue. Yep. So, anyway. Zach, have you heard of Lawbreakers? I'm going to bet you haven't. I am aware of Lawbreakers. Really? Yeah. It uh, it did not go well for them. Yes. They had a bad time, and uh, people have basically checked out. But that company, I believe Boss Key is the people that made it? Yep. Yep. They got a new game going on. Tell me about it. A, I hear it's Battle Royale themed. Zach, it's Battle Royale. Not only that, it is 80s themed. I'm on board for that. Have you have you ever seen uh, that Schwarzenegger movie, Marathon Man? The Running Man? Running Man. Running Man. I yes. get those mixed up. So it's similar. Uh, there was another Battle Royale game sort of like this that I can't remember the name of. Uh, but I think there's going to be like announcers. And it's basically a game show Battle Royale. And everything is over the top and zany. So uh, is it basically Running Man? It's more, you remember that uh, game Sunset Overdrive that was like a Xbox One exclusive launch title? Yeah, it was like super cartoony. Yes, it's very similar to that, I think, in aesthetic. Mm. Do you, but it's like a game show. This you, game is called uh, Radical Heights, by the way. Do you remember the game that came out? I think it's in like early access. It came out a little earlier this year. It was called SOS. It was basically like a, a game show sort of a survivor situation where you have these people on an island and it's set up exactly like a game show where you have these introductions before the match actually starts where you have these people uh, or you have the avatars obviously so you're not actually seeing like the cam of the person playing <laughs> but yeah. they have like five, ten seconds to say something at the intro or whatever and then... Um, they all go to this like island and they find gear and stuff like that. And as they come across other people, they can choose to like, you know, high five each other or to essentially be in like, uh, be friends or whatever to say they're not going to hurt each other. And then uh, obviously they can break those at any time if they want to. But so it's this constant sort of, uh, you know, are they going to be my friend? Are they going to uh, kill me sort of thing? So it's a little bit, like the game show, uh, you know, Survivor, but it's also a little bit kind of like PUBG. But it's very focused on that, like, sort of faux TV presentation. And so mm. I, it seemed like it was going to be this, like, perfect streamer game. It was, like, the most... 
streamer centric game that I could think of at the time uh, it came out or when it first came out and I was watching it. But it do- does not seem to have taken off on Twitch the way I thought it was going to. Yeah, I don't really even remember. I don't know what you're talking about at all. I should show you a video at some point uh, and see what you think of it. But this sounds a little bit like that, maybe, but a little bit more uh, Running Man themed. Yeah, there's not really a like be friends or not be friends type thing. It is a battle royale through and through. But the game show elements are sort of like uh, they recently added vending machines in Fortnite, and so it's similar to that a little bit. The main the the twist in this is that. It's all about money, uh, fake money. So you drop in, you're killing people, but you're also like, instead of like PUBG where you're looking for armor and guns, you are looking for guns, but you're also looking for money. So you go into these places, you're finding money, you're killing people for money. If you find an ATM, you can deposit that money into your offshore accounts, which is like something that carries over. So this is a game where there is progress to an extent because you can use your money, you can like collect money and then within the game, you can like purchase guns like before other people. So there's a little bit of an imbalance in that way. That sounds a bit like GTA Free Roam, right? Because couldn't you go like get a bunch of money or whatever, and then you would have to take it back to like an ATM to deposit mm-hmm. it into your account? And until you did that, somebody could come along and kill you, and you would drop all your money, and they could pick it up. Yes. Yeah, so it's it, this is sort of a the conceit is to like add a progression system, basically. Or, like, uh, benefits for playing a lot, which I guess PUBG, the only benefit for playing a lot is, like, your skill increases. This is sort of an artificial skill increase by allowing you, if you collect a lot of money, and I think there's a way to collect fame as well, but they're not really saying what fame does, I don't think. You are able to win more games because you have more money, and then you can get guns faster, basically, when you play. And also there's, like, weird game show elements, like, instead of drops being generic drops i think like uh like spin to win drops will happen and just like other game show elements will happen they released a trailer and it seems crazy is there like community engagement so like if somebody is streaming it and watching it can they like have some sort of effect on the game i don't know we could find this out zach because guess what it comes out in two hours what Available, it's free to play starting April 10th, which, if my calendar is correct, is tomorrow for us recording right now. It is. So this could be something we could do a video on and sort of explore it. Is it free to play or is it... How much are they charging? It's FTP. Well then, we should definitely try it out. Uh, Is it on Steam then, I assume? It's on STEM, yes. FTP on STEM, gotcha. That's right. Something to look forward to, maybe a video later in the week if it really takes off. I'm interested to see how all the money systems, and I also, I mean, to be honest, I like the aesthetic. It's definitely early access. You can tell some of the animations are placeholder, but, uh, and I believe they like produced it in like five months. It's like a passion project, but I, I like the aesthetic and there's like trampolines. So so are they saying this is, uh, early access? I believe so, yes. Okay. I think that they are. So, uh, Well, hopefully it does better for them than Lawbreakers, because Lawbreakers was, like, they say it wasn't, but, like, when you look at that game, it just looks like, an, uh, like a bland Overwatch ripoff. Yes, it was very unfortunate. And uh, so, yeah, it didn't, didn't, it didn't last for very long. Zach, game's done quick. That's coming up. It's coming up. SGQ is on the horizon, and this week they have released the games list. They haven't released the times yet. They're probably still trying to calculate that. But uh, the games list has come out, and there's some really interesting ones. For those that don't know, there's Summer Games Done Quick and Awesome Games Done Quick. Awesome Games Done Quick is in January, and Summer Games Done Quick is in June, I want to say. Usually it's around E3. Maybe it's in July. Explain, Uh, explain like, kind of the like i guess background or like what what really is games done quick so it's a charity for uh i believe it's usually doctors without borders is the main one and what it basically is is these people take over a hotel for a whole week a week straight and it's all about speed running so people submit their speed runs and then uh, the staff kind of like curates and figures out what they actually want to do and then they catalog them 
and put them out. And so for like 24 hours a day for a seven day week, they are just constantly doing speed runs. It's a very, it's like, it's a very impressive technical achievement because like people are speed running things on like NESs as well as like top of the line PCs and it all is pretty much seamless and there's like always like fun things that happen and I find speedruns very fascinating and but it's also like happening all the time right it's like a sort of a 24 almost 24 7 sort of thing mm-hmm. I did say 24 7 oh did you I was sorry I was not listening <laughs> but uh they so the one thing that uh, like I generally don't end up watching a lot of uh, GDQ live because of the fact that most of the games that I want to watch are, are happening at like five in the morning or something like yes. that. Yes, especially like long form games. Like they did, man, they did a like a hundred percent version of Final Fantasy VII, which was like an eight hour run. So like those kinds of things, they'll start at like midnight, or they'll have like a like an awesomely I what would they call it like an awesomely bad games done quick or something that is also oh, like yeah. a a PM or like an like an early AM type thing, but they archive them all on YouTube pretty quickly. Yeah, that's where I end up w- seeing most of the ones I actually want to watch. So usually I'll watch them after the fact on YouTube. So th- that's another option for you if you're at all interested in this. But I wanted to talk about a, a couple of games that they have this year. A Switch game. It's not. I guess it's not exclu- Switch exclusive. But this game, Celeste which really I think lends itself to, it's a very tight platformer that came out on Switch, but also on PC, it's being run on PC. Uh, it's happening, I think in the first day. And then Cuphead is another one. Why, it looks watching, like they're doing- Watching someone who is super good at uh, both of those games would be really interesting to watch. Yes, those games I'm very are excited. Very attractive to look at, but they also are very hard to play. They have estimated times of finishing uh, you have to submit those with your run. And the Cuphead one, it looks like they're doing two ones. They're doing uh, regular Legacy All Flags. I'm not sure what that means, but that's only going to take 45 minutes. And then they're doing 100%, which is going to be 55 minutes, only five minutes longer. Mm. Uh, there, there's usually a Dark Souls run. looks like there's one. Uh, they're doing an original DSX run, which will be very interesting. Early PC games from like 90s and like the early aughts are very fun to watch because you can probably they break in a very interesting ways they're doing a divinity original sin 2 any percent run which is only gonna take 40 minutes Ooh, i would definitely watch that uh there was one i was very excited about i'm just scrolling through them yeah so the uh, the the thing that is very interesting to watch about these is the way that the people that play them find to essentially break the game so that they can complete them much faster than anyone would normally do. Yes. Well, I mean, what you're watching is like hundreds and hundreds of hours of there's like discord channels where people who love a game will all get together and everyone is sort of like takes part of a game, especially if it's a long game and just like, it's a big community coming together to put forth a very tight run and just like, Get those numbers down. Get them super fast. Yeah, they have to play the the game that they're playing for this. They have to like dedicate probably thousands of hours of practicing mm-hmm. in order to be able to do what they have to do to to complete their run for this. So it looks like there's going to be ooh, there are also races as well. So it seems like there's going to be a Super Mario 64 70 star race, which I think uh, will be pretty interesting. There's a big Super Mario Maker block. There's always a big Super Mario Maker. There's uh, sort of these uh, celebrities in the Super Mario Maker universe that make these in- insane levels that are like crazy hard to do. But they're also super good runners that like, it's basically their job to run them. And so they usually have these like 3v3 or like 4v4 blind races uh, made by usually, it's usually the same three people like, uh, I think like this guy Carl Sagan makes them. <laughs> and it's Carl like, Sagan. Uh, yeah, he's like I think. Uh, man, I, I hope I'm getting this right. I don't I think, think he's you like are. one of the best ones. No, no, no. It's not. It's not the Carl Sagan. Like <laughs> okay. <laughs> but an interesting thing, actually. So, what would you say the number one thing that came out last year is that you want to speed run? Well, Cuphead, but um, Super Mario Odyssey. Yes, I would say that as well. That is not included in the base marathon. What? But it is a it's a bonus game, and so usually what they're probably going to do is it's going to be a donation incentive. Like throughout the week, there are donation incentives where you can, when you donate your money, you can first of all, if you donate a certain amount, you're entered in to win prizes. But also, there's like 
uh, sub things you can donate for. For instance, like the file name on a Legend of Zelda run, and there will be like choices you can pick, and then whatever gets the most money wins. And probably they are leaving out Super Mario Odyssey because everybody wants to see it. Like I think when Breath of the Wild came out, that was also left off, and you had to like reach an insane donation amount to get. But Super Mario Odyssey is probably like definitely going to happen because everybody wants to see it, and they're going to use it to earn a, or a bunch of money for their charity, which is great. But also, like, I can't imagine it's probably going to be a crazy donation incentive because they know everybody wants to see it. Yeah, that's true. That would be sort of the big game to see, especially uh, of games that came out last year. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this is something I think we are going to do a separate video wholly on games done quick because i want to i want to i mean obviously like the awareness of it is like reaching peak like it's always the number one thing on twitch the entire week and people are aware of it but i think it, like the most coverage it can get the better because i think it's great and i want to do a little like top five games i'm looking forward to sgq 2018 I'm definitely interested in seeing that because I, like I said, I don't get to watch a lot of it. I tend to watch it, uh, the stuff that they end up putting on YouTube. Uh, so I'm interested to see which ones that I should pay attention to for later, like when they show up on the YouTube channel. Yes. And maybe even like after the fact, uh, if I like, I'll, I will probably watch a majority of SGQ, and so maybe we can do like a little roundup after the fact of like the best things to watch from this with a whole bunch of links so you can go straight to the VODs. Yeah, that, that's a really good idea, yeah. Zach, last week we talked a lot about augmented reality. We did. AR is the shorthand for that. Aaron's reality. That's right, I wish. But uh, I was reminded randomly uh, uh, earlier in the week that I had started to watch an anime a long time ago about augmented reality and then I had stopped for some reason. I think maybe I moved or something happened where I had to stop watching it, but I remembered it this week and I started watching it again and it is very prescient of like the current times. It's a, a an anime called Dino Coil and it was made in 2007 and it's 26 episodes. It's a full length show and it is about a group of kids who are living in this town and AR is like super prevalent. So they have these glass, everybody wears glasses and they have like digital pets and cool digital things. And basically the way that AR works in their world is everything is mapped. So like it's not tied to your glasses. You're just seeing the, the mapped out world of AR. So like they have, uh, I've only just started rewatching it. So I don't know a lot of the plot, but for instance, they have this dog that is a digital dog and they can see it, but it can like run off and get lost. Like it's not tied to them. Like it exists in this uh, AR world. And it's a really cool anime. I don't know why, like it's not popular for some reason, such to that like I had to watch like fan subs of it because I can't even find like a way to buy it anywhere. What was the name of it? Dino Coil. D-E-N-N-O coil. Sometimes it's D-E-N-N-O-U coil. But it's very cool, and the, it's very beautifully animated, and a lot of its ideas are very interesting. Like, for instance, if they make phone call, anyone can have a, a screen in front of them anytime, but if they make phone calls, all they do is, like, they make a phone, like, hand gesture, and they hold it up to their face, and, like, that's phones, basically, because... They've got, like, audio in their glasses, and, like, their glasses can see everything. So, like, the computing in this show is very interesting. For instance, like, they all have, like, little pouches, and they just can dig into the pouch and pull out anything, really, because it's, like, just being pulled out in AR. So they use uh, a bunch of weird little hacks that are, like, semi-legal that allow them to basically perform magic. Uh, within their like AR world and it's very interesting and I I really don't understand why it's not more popular but uh, maybe it will be in the coming months and years when people rediscover it when like AR becomes a big thing so does it like do you feel like it sort of is predicted a little bit of where things might seem to be going for sure. Like, for sure people are going to have AR pets. And I probably for a long time it's going to be tied to the computer that you're holding with you. But I think the dream is for some sort of municipal network to exist where 
the glasses don't need to be the main computing source. It's sort of just like a pass through and the whole world is mapped and like uh, you don't need, you like the stopgap I feel like is like how small can you get a super powerful computer capable of doing AR? Like, can you fit in the glasses or can you just sort of let it tap in through to some kind of like cloud that has already accessed or that has already mapped out the entire world. I think that's maybe a better way to do it. I also don't know anything about computer science, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Like watching this anime is just getting me jacked all over again for AR. And I'm, I think it's great. I mean, I've only watched the first two episodes. I think I only got 10 episodes in when I watched it like, I don't know, five years ago. And then I stopped watching it for some reason. But I'm very excited to watch more of it because it's, uh, I don't know, it's just, it like, AR makes regular life a game, which is great. Yeah, that's so that's why I think AR is more practical than VR. Like I said this last week on the podcast, like, I'm way more interested and invested in what's coming up in terms of AR than VR because, like, VR is fine. It, it can be fun, and if the world ever turns... A, you know, post-apocalyptic, we might need an oasis, but, uh, (laughs) like AR has very, very practical applications and it could be like the future sort of personal computing device that we, you know, walk around with every day. It could change sort of the way we live and look at things, uh, in a very real and sort of tangible way that we, you know, as we are just basically walking around in everyday life. Yes, and to that, I have another news item that I'd like you to take a look at. So, we talked a lot about Magic Leap, uh, and this is not Magic Leap. Very confusingly, there is another technology that is called Leap Motion, and Leap Motion has been around for a long time, and like people will strap it to like the front of like DK1 rift kits and things like that, and Leap Motion is basically mapping your hands and people use this in vr to see their hands but leap motion just came out with an ar headset uh sort of and if you scroll down if the, to these uh twit pics which i will post somewhere uh you can see like the crazy things you can do with this like the one-to-one the thing about leap motion is it's like one-to-one pretty much hand tracking which you can do a lot of interesting things with are you looking at these? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Like that thing where he flips his hand over and there's an A, B, C that he can tap and it's just like flaps. Did you see that? Virtual wearables is what they're promoting. Yeah, this looks crazy. This isn't... Uh, and there's like sort of ambient occlusion or it's just like occlusion basically where you can see like uh, the cube is in front of you and then it's behind your hand. I'm not really describing this well. But like it's, it's basically something you need to it's see. It's reacting we'll to it what's somewhere. happening in real life. Exactly. And it's very cool. And this is basically what we were just talking about, but in the real world. And I know that Magic Leap incorporates hand gestures in some way. Uh, not Magic Leap. Uh, yeah, Magic Leap does in some way. But this Leap Motion, its main thing, like it, the starting technology is hand tracking. So they are using that to make the leap into man it's very hard to talk about these two things back to back so i think i think like a good way of describing it so that people can know what we're talking about like think iron man like uh, you know when tony stark is in his sort of workspace and he's like picking up the you know the little designs for his iron man suit and he's like moving it around and he's like throwing stuff in the trash it looks a lot like that but instead of it being projected out you're like seeing it through like a headset exactly so to recap leap motion is this hand tracking that just came out with an ar headset magic leap is the headset that is yet to be like shown to the general public they have like a render of it but i think they share a lot of technologies and i'm very interested in both of them but this this week leap motion is the one that came out with something. Man, I really wish that they both didn't have leap in the title and then an M word. <laughs> it's going to be it's very hard to keep track. Of. It is going to be really hard to differentiate those. And like, if once they come out with like a consumer ready product, uh, people are going to be so confused as to yes. 
Like, wait, is that the leap motion or the magic leap? Or? I mean, in ideal in an ideal world, they'll merge, and I don't, this is probably not going to happen. But wouldn't it be great? And then it could just be one thing. But I don't know. I I saw these little tech demos, and I was very interested in them. But Zach, now it's time for you to pitch something to me. Yeah. So I I said before we started recording that I had a little pitch for you that I wanted. To, to get your opinion on. so I'm very excited for this. You should keep your expectations tempered. They're <laughs> if, sky high right n- now. Nope, too high. Bring it down a little bit. So right. like last week, uh, this kind of does coincide with the, the whole AR, VR discussion because we were talking about last week how uh, somebody was saying that we're going to have console quality games on mobile devices. Yes, the CEO of Epic. Yeah, and so then you asked me the question, uh, do I think that, like, the next PlayStation will just be, like, a phone? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't think so. Like, I had more time to think about it. I don't know why, but I randomly thought about it. And so I was like, well, what could they do? Because, like, the Vita obviously didn't work. Uh, it didn't sell super well. And Microsoft doesn't really have a mobile platform right now. But mm-hmm. like you wouldn't, they wouldn't want to come out with phones because like Apple and Samsung and Google, like they already pretty much have that space locked down, and Microsoft has already failed in that space once. So <laughs> uh, the idea would be, what if in order to compete in the mobile space with Nintendo, like I don't think home consoles are going anywhere. So this is would be like a separate thing. So in order to compete with Nintendo, uh, but without trying to also compete with, like, Android and iOS, if Sony and Microsoft also started, like, licensing games for Android and iOS, uh, and they start selling, like, a MOGA-style bundle that pairs, like, a Bluetooth PlayStation or Xbox controller that has, like, one of those clips that you can uh, put your phone in, or, like, a stand that you can stand a tablet or phone up on, and then... Like, it would pair through their mobile app. Um, hmm. And then, so, like the uh, Switch reveal trailer that showed that guy on the plane with, like, the Switch standing on his tray table, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. next to that guy, you would have somebody <laughs> with, like, a tablet or a phone uh, sitting on their tray table, and they're just holding a PlayStation controller. Interesting. And then, so that way, Sony wouldn't need, like, a Vita, and maybe they could come up with, like a good way of also doing sort of that like game streaming thing that they do on Vita where you can also like play your like PS4 games on Vita Mm -hmm. but you would be doing it on a phone I am pro this I guess you sound less enthusiastic about it than I was expecting no it's good it's a good idea I just uh I don't know. I don't know what's giving me pause. I guess I have this stigma with phone games where, and I think the general populace has this, where like all phone games are terrible, but that's because of the touchscreen. But that's that's why I say it would have to involve a Bluetooth controller. Yes. So it would be like a MOGA style bundle. Like, you know, the MOGA controllers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it'd be like that. But also we're assuming in this conversation that that guy is right that there are, is going to be console quality games like there you can make the case that there already is but uh if we're assuming that like sort of up to, up to snuff with like almost current console quality games on like mobile devices now i would say the one thing that would hold it back even if it was, like, great graphics, is the screen size. Yeah, that's why, like, like phones are getting bigger, obviously. Like, the screen-to-body ratio is, you know, shrinking or whatever. True. So it, we're getting also, like, taller devices. I don't know if that ends up being an issue or not down the line, but, like, the, the screens are getting bigger while the bezels are getting smaller. So the footprint's not necessarily getting any bigger, but the screens are actually increasing in size. And then, of course, um, you could uh, also do this on a tablet. So maybe it just reinvigorates the tablet market, which I don't think is doing real great right now. Yeah, there's pretty much only iPads, unfortunately. Yeah. Going back to AR, though, I mean, if this was a a bundle where you got the controller and then you already had an AR headset, the screen could be any size. True. I think 
I am pro this. Like if there were like if the Sony app on my phone was like, hey, do you want to download like Inside or uh, like another like Hyper Light Drifter or something? and have this controller, I would be like, yeah, I I think I would do that. Yeah, so that's kind of the beauty of it, is that it would all be sort of handled through the, like, Sony, like, the PlayStation app or, like, the Xbox mobile app or whatever they call theirs. Here's the thing, though. Here's the key thing. I had a Vita for a while, and the reason I had it was because I was very into Destiny 1, and I had to travel, and I wanted to play my Destiny 1 anywhere. So if this was a thing where it could sync game saves and it was like like parody, cross-platform, sort of like any game that I buy on my PS4, I can play on my phone, 100% I would use that, like a lot. Well, so like right now, Microsoft does a pretty good job where if you buy a game through the Microsoft Store, you get like... It's like Play Anywhere, I think they call it, where you have it on your Xbox and you have it on your PC... I would assume if they were able to come up with something like this, they would also like include that like whatever mobile version of it. But the, mm-hmm. I don't know if they would be able to do a mobile version of like a like current console generation or whatever game. But if you could do the game streaming thing, yes. if they could find a way to improve that so it worked better than it did on the Vita. I mean, it worked pretty good on the Vita. Well, it, it's very dependent on like your the home internet that your console is connected to, True. but also the internet that you you have while you're out and about. So it, yeah. the potential there is for a rough uh, gaming uh, situation. But if they if they can improve that, uh, and maybe they just need to improve like wireless networks, uh, which they should definitely do. Uh, True. But uh, something like that where it's just phones are able to actually run those games, whether they're streaming them or they've actually downloaded a version of it on your phone. And then maybe they would have to make it so that there's some sort of mobile controls for it in case people don't buy the controller Mm. bundle. But I I feel like ideally you would have the controller I think this is a really good idea, and I can just imagine, like, someday there will be another good, like, another Destiny, basically. Who's to say what that's going to be? I mean, they're making another division that they're going to unveil at E3. But there's going to be a thing where, like, logging in every day is a benefit, and there's things to do every day. And, like, when people travel, and they are, like, in a hotel room, and they have Wi-Fi, or, like, they're at their parents' house for Christmas or something, and they have Wi-Fi, if, like, like, being able to not have to bring your PlayStation... Like, you can bring your Switch anywhere, which is great. And to have that functionality to stream, like, the Division 2 to your phone, like, anywhere where you can get Wi-Fi, I think it's very compelling and could possibly happen. I think you're right. Well, and so the reason why, like, where games are at on a mobile device right now is so kind of mind-blowing. Like, I remember the early days of the 360 when I was first sort of dipping my toes into Xbox Live, and it was, like, blowing my mind that I could, like, play a game with a friend, you know, who lives, you know, across town or whatever, and we Mm -hmm. could be chatting and playing, and it was like those old LAN parties or, like, couch co-op or whatever, but we were able to play even when we couldn't, like, hang out in the same space. And uh, that was so cool to me. You can have that ex- ex- same exact experience, but on a mobile device, like, right now. Like, me and my brother can play PUBG Mobile on my phone. And granted, like, the graphics uh, are, aren't as good as they would be if you were playing on PC. But, like, you you have the capability of voice chat and stuff like that right now. You don't currently have that on the Switch. So phones, while graphically speaking... Uh, aren't delivering quite the same like quality of gameplay that you're getting on a Switch. Like there's already the precedent for like a better online experience on a mobile phone than there is on a Switch right now. Yes, the Switch has shifted a paradigm, and I think, I mean, who's to say how far along anything is in development? But like, the PS5 will eventually become a thing, and I don't know. I feel like it's likely that. 
the Switch had an effect on the development cycle of the PlayStation 5 and probably even the Xbox, whatever they're going to call it, some nonsense. It's possible. Uh, I, I wonder, though, because I, th- I feel like there was a report where Sony said that they were not going to try to compete with Nintendo in that sort of hybrid um, home console slash mobile console space. But maybe they yeah, have to, and maybe, or, and maybe a good way to do that is something like I was describing with, you know, not necessarily trying to sell you another piece of hardware like they were doing between the Vita and the PS4, but leveraging what device you already have in your pocket and making that yeah. somehow able to or compatible with their current console. It's a good idea, and I think it's I think it's uh, viable. I I would be interested to see. I mean, I guess we'll find out. I mean, who's to say what things will be revealed at E3? That's why it's such an exciting event. It it's is. The best event of the year. It is the most exciting event of the year. Do you know what the most exciting event of this weekend was, Zach? Um, I was going to try to come up with something goofy, but I cannot think of anything, so no. Zach, what, so we talked about PUBG having a bunch of uh, changes in the news segment. And another way that they're coming around and trying to compete with Fortnite is having these weekly events. And it's sort of like a tavern brawl, but for PUBG. And it's uh, very compelling. And this week's event was called Tequila Sunrise. The first event was last week, and it was... Uh, Usually the max amount of people people you can have on a, a squad is four, but they opened it up to 8v8. So, like, it was groups of eight, which is crazy. But this week, it was called Tequila Sunrise. It was on Miramar. It was only on the desert map. And it was shotguns only. And <laughs> you saw where the first circle was so people could better drop into, like, very hot zones. So it led to, like, crazy stuff happening, like vehicles were way more viable because you wouldn't just get destroyed from long distance like there were no snipers it was only shotguns so it i played for i think about three hours this weekend i won our first match me and my friend played and we were paired up it could, it's only squads so we had two random people we were playing with but this guy diesel bop was playing with us and uh, shout out to diesel bop shout out to diesel bop i don't know where he went afterwards we couldn't pair up with him but he was great or she it, it was a, a female uh, avatar so who's to say maybe it was a girl um we won we won our first game and it was very exciting and it was only shotguns there's three three i believe it's three three variants of shotgun in the game and there's like a two barreled one that has like very good spread there's a pump action and like an auto shotgun and because you can see where the first uh drop or like the biggest circle is you can really hone in and like immediately be in the circle and immediately get into action and uh, it was a lot of fun. That sounds very cool. I, I didn't know you were dipping back into PUBG. We should play never together sometime because I have not played play in many months. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm a pro, but I do play like at least once a week with uh, some of my friends, and it's very good. I have I have one friend who's like very very good at it, and he will often shepherd me and my other friend to victories. So I have one. I probably won over 30 times. Well, then I should get in with you and you should uh, help me win because I, yeah, I don't think sure. I've ever won and I've only played like a handful of times. I have it's played great. lots of mobile PUBG, though. Yeah, maybe that has incre- increased your skill. I doubt it. Have you been playing anything? Uh, I have. So I started Long Gone Days. We talked about this game uh, a couple weeks ago, I think. Uh, it's that it's hard to describe because it's it's an anime art style, but it's like an old school RPG that has. Uh, so you're like, you know, sort of an not isometric. I guess it's kind of an isometric, but you're like walking around and you'll go talk to people Um just think old school RPGs and like with the turn based combat, uh, and you'll have a sense of what the game is like. But there's also these segments where uh, it becomes like a first person shooter. And I'm very interested in that because I watched a trailer for this and I didn't see any first person shooter parts. Well, so not the way you would think, it would, it's more like, um, 
you're just controlling sort of the sniper, so you have a scope. You don't see a gun or anything like that. You just see through the scope, and you're just sort of moving it around the screen uh, until you find an enemy, and then you're you're firing at them, and you only have so many bullets or whatever. So it's not like traditional first-person shooter. I don't want to throw you off by saying that, but it is no, it's like, it, it is sort of a first-person view. It's like Duck Hunt. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, so it is very, very old school, um, and I'm I'm pretty into it. So far, I have found that the turn-based combat can be difficult. I don't know if I just went the wrong direction and wound up at a, like a higher level spot than I was supposed to be, and I am struggling because of it. But I, I, when I stopped playing, I played for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and when I stopped, it was because I had hit this spot where... It was me and, like, I had one other person with me in the game. Uh, Like, you can have a companion, I guess, or I don't know if you can have more than one or not yet. But uh, I went up against these, like, three enemies, and I was constantly missing or uh, they were dodging or whatever whenever I would do an attack, and they were hitting me every time for big damage, and it was very, very Mm. rough. So... Uh, I don't know if there, it's supposed to have that sort of difficulty spike right there at that particular spot or if I just need to go back and do some more exploring or not. But So it's made by a development team out of Chile. And oh. um, it takes pl- the game takes place in like this dystopian future that I want to say is like Poland or Russia. Mm. And you are like this sort of new recruit uh, soldier in this military. And I don't know if it's a spoiler to say, like I, I can maybe describe what happens in the very early going of the game, but you go out in this mission and you're like sniping these people. And then eventually you realize that you're, you're kind of killing these innocent people And so you try to, like, flee the scene, but you, like, need the help from your medic friend to sort of get out of the the base or whatever. And then as – and he sort of unwittingly helps you because he's trying to be friendly, but he also doesn't want to, like, desert or get into into trouble for doing so. But Mm -hmm. uh, because he leaves with you, uh, the enemy – or the army sort of turns against you guys because you're deserters. And uh, they're very violent, so they will kill you on <laughs> on sight, basically, or they will try to. So uh, I have only made it to the part where we basically just leave the army and we're trying to sort of flee uh, because the army wants to kill us because we have deserted. But I'm interested to see where the story goes. Uh, if you're into, like, old-school RPGs, this reminded me a lot of... Uh, like R- RPGs you would have played on like an SNES, sort of oh. sort of that era RPG. I'm very interested in that. We should do a video series on this. We should definitely do that. I'm up for it. I I did record the hour and a half I played, so we should definitely get into that. But excellent. Uh, it's in. I think it is also in early access. So it's like fifteen dollars on Steam, and it's. I, I would assume that they're planning on still updating it and adding more stuff to it over time. The control scheme is a little weird. There's like you're only using the directional buttons to move around, and then the only buttons you have for actions are like Z and X. Oh, well, that's weird. Can you remap them? I didn't see an option. Maybe I just need to look around a little bit more in the menus. Uh, Hmm. movement was a little bit clunky, so it is, you can tell it's, like, early days of, like, a sort of a small development team sort of putting Mm -hmm. this thing together. Uh, but maybe that's all the more reason why we should support the game, and, um, yeah, I'm, like, the aesthetic of it is really good. The music's great, the animation is very, very good, um, and it's, so far, it's an interesting story. I'm interested to see where it goes, and... Yeah, if you're a fan of old school RPGs, give it give it a shot. For sure. It's called Long Gone Days. Expect some videos about it. Yes. Zach, quickly, we're running out of time, but each of us watched an anime that we want to talk about. 
Yeah, so I saw on Crunchyroll they had the first episode of the Persona 5 animation, and because I played uh, not all of, but a lot of Persona 5 last year, (laughs) uh, I was very interested to watch the first episode, and it does feel like it's basically the intro to the game. Like, they're keeping pretty well in line with the way the game started out, which is cool. I think it's it's nice that they're not, like, um, changing it in, you know, very vast ways. So it's kind of nice that if you – maybe if you didn't play the game, maybe you could check out uh, the first episode, I guess. But So the thing about the game that uh, kind of made me hesitant to get it is it's one of those games where, like – every single day you have a set amount of time and energy and so you have to like really think about what you want to do that day and i like it seems like you can make wrong decisions and like waste a day well i not necessarily wrong decisions like you do sort of have the choice to uh, as to how you want to spend your time like you can either spend it um you know working on your relationships with some of your friends there's like those life sim things, but you can also yeah. work on uh, increasing your skills. So there's like five different skills in the game, and so you can work on upgrading those as well. And uh, so there's like maybe an optimal way to go about it, but there's not necessarily a wrong way to go about it. So are you gonna continue to watch the anime? I think so. Yeah, uh, especially since like I'm well through like the first arc and Mm -hmm. uh so i'm interested to see the whole thing play out as an anime and uh the thing that was interesting to me was uh how they're gonna handle the main character because in the game you name the main character what you want to name them and like i guess there is a voice actor that does the main role but he's you're essentially making all the uh, decisions. You're like you're you're picking the the voice options or the speech options in the game. So I was very curious to see how they handle. Uh, I guess making uh, canon whatever the main character does and how they sort of chose to go about that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I, maybe I should watch it. Do you think I should watch it? You should watch the first episode uh, because I don't, it doesn't give too much away. It gives you a taste of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I guess, I don't know, like, I'm not sure whether you're going to get around to playing the game or not. We should do a video on the game itself because the game, I think it's great. It's very, very long. It's a massive time sink. So yeah. the I guess uh, alternatively, if you know you're not going to get around to playing the game, you could just watch the anime. It seems like it's going to stick very close to what they did with the game and with the game's story. So you could essentially get the sense of the game or I guess have the experience of the game without playing it. Maybe I will, Zach. But you'll have to obviously wait for each episode to come out. True. I watched an anime. What did you watch? So it's it's like the new, it's spring 2018 season of anime just started. That's why there's all these new animes. But, so do you know what Sword Art Online is? I have not finished it, but I have seen a decent portion of it. So there was there were two seasons of Sword Art Online, and in the second season they revealed this new VR. So the plot of that is like there's a new VR MMO, and people are like super into it, and it's like a it's Matrix style. It's like full dive where like you put on a headset and then you basically fall asleep and you wake up and you're in the world, so you're not like in your own body. Uh, and the plot of the first season is that like this guy made this VR MMO and then he trapped all these teen or like basically everybody who played it in it. And they couldn't get out of it. And so they had to just, like, beat the game to get out of it. But they eventually get out of it. Spoiler alert. And, uh... Oh, no! In the second season, uh, they reveal this new game called Gun Gale Online, which is sort of like a... It's like a guns game, basically. It's like a Gun Gale game? Well, what it is, is it's it's basically Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. It's like a Battle Royale-type game. uh, But it's like a VR MMO. And so they just came out with a third season called Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gale Online. And the first episode is out, and it's none of the, as far as I know, it's none of the main characters from the Sword Art Online main series that has been going on for a long time. That was going to be my question. So do I need to go back and catch up with this, or can I just start here? 
you can start here. All you need to know is that VR MMOs exist, basically. It does a great job of telling you all about the world. And I believe this is just going to follow this one girl who plays it. And it doesn't reveal a lot about her character in the first episode. But it looks like it's going to be pretty good. It's, it's What's crazy is it's basically PUBG the anime a little bit. Like, there's even some of the same, like... Like, at one point uh, in the first episode, they hear shooting in the distance. And the guy that the girl is with is like oh, they're using 7.62 ammo. Uh, And she's like, you can tell that just from listening? And he's like, oh, yeah. Which, like, you can totally do in PUBG. And I was like, oh, man, that's crazy that they're saying the same exact things. I guess I assumed a lot of things in PUBG. I don't know anything about guns, so I was just like, oh, they made up all these things. But I guess 7.62 ammo is, like, a thing. Not important. But anyway, (laughs) I really like it because I love VR MMOs. Is it that military aesthetic? Uh, A little bit. It's more like far future dystopian like the main like area of well it'd have to be it's uh sort of i guess that's the battle royale thing yeah like it looks like a crazy like uh futurescape in gun gale online and they're dropped into these like uh it's very similar to PUBG, where it's like abandoned cityscapes and things like that i'm really enjoying it and only the first episode has come out but it's basically PUBG the anime except with like uh I think it's going to have more charm than PUBG does, which is just like very raw and realistic. But something to check out if you have a Crunchyroll subscription, uh, Sword Art Online Alternative. I did uh, subscribe to Crunchyroll in order to see the first episode of Persona 5, so I will probably definitely get and watch this episode. Yes, totally check this out. Because the thing that I love about VR MMO type shows is like there can be someone who's like super famous in the game and then out of the game, they're just a regular person. So it's sort of like a superhero thing where you'll meet someone in real life and you don't realize that they're this crazy person in this other world, which is probably going to happen in this, and I I love that reveal. So it's like Ready Player One. Yes, it's similar to Ready Player One in a lot of ways, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this week. Like and subscribe. Do you have any parting words? Like and subscribe, Zach. That's my motto. I mean, I have already liked and subscribed by this point. Um, You should definitely follow our Twitter I, yes. If you wonder like when a new video comes out, it's it just gets posted automatically, so it's right there. And we have an Instagram as well, which something sometimes get posted to. Yeah, whenever I get around to it, basically. Uh, I, we're a work in progress. We're still we're st- very true. Still Early out. days. Yes. We're coming up on one month actually. We are. Uh, it's very uh, we. <laughs> Came up with this very quickly, and uh, we were thinking about the particulars later. Let's just do it. (laughs) Uh, And so, yeah, we're still figuring things out as we go. But, yeah, definitely subscribe, uh, leave us a comment, uh, give us a like, and uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.